it record now. Okay. So, uh, hello everybody. So today's speaker is Alfredo Davide Ferella. He is from uh, University of L'Aquila. He got his PhD at L'Aquila University. Then he moved uh, to Aachen and then uh, uh, Zurich held in postdoc position with uh, Laura Baudis. He got a researcher's position at LNGS for about two years afterwards. And then in 2015, got a senior scientist position at the Stockholm University. And since 2019 is uh, associate, sorry, Yes, he's associate professor at the University of L'Aquila. He mainly worked with Xenon um, 100 and all the Xenon and Darwin experiment, he expert in low background application. Uh, he was the analysis coordinator of Xenon 100 and operation manager. So he will discuss today about the status and science program of the Xenon experiment. So thank you, Alfredo, for, for joining us virtually. And I'll leave you the, the stage. <laughs> Thank, uh, thank you, uh, Silvia, uh, for inviting me to this uh, uh, to give this seminar. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, depending on the time zone where you are. I'm from I'm in Italy right now, so it's uh, 6 p.m. for me. Uh, yeah, so I will uh, talk about the status and the science program of the Xenon uh, experiments. Um, <clears throat> So let's uh, start with the, uh, just uh, an overview of the uh, collaboration. Uh, the collaboration is uh, uh, is a kind of worldwide. Uh, uh, a few continents in the southern hemisphere are missing, but uh, we have uh, a good collaboration mainly from Europe, the US, uh, Japan, China, and also. Uh, from the uh, Arabic uh, uh, Peninsula and, uh, and Israel. Uh, so uh, here is a picture of the collaboration uh, in September 2019. So that's uh, pre-COVID era. And of course, we kept uh, meeting of, uh, virtually. And this is the last uh, picture that we took uh, in the COVID era. Uh, this was in uh, December uh, last year. <clears throat> So, uh, as we said, uh, I want to talk about the Xenon uh, program. And uh, I just uh, need to uh, remind uh, you what is the science goal of the uh, of Xenon, of the Xenon program, uh, just uh, without the pretension of being uh, complete or exhaustive. <clears throat> I just want to remind you that uh, we know from uh, different, uh, many astrophysical, uh, observations that uh, that uh, there is some um, uh, content of dark matter in the universe which uh, is 85 percent of the total matter of the, in the universe uh, and this uh, this observation is coming as we said from different astronomical scales uh, we have a, a standard uh, uh, model for uh, uh, a standard cosmological model that includes uh, uh, so-called uh, cold dark matter and uh, it has been uh, proven uh, remarkably successful in explaining the CMB and the large scale structure formation <clears throat> and uh, but still uh, these uh, the finding this uh, dark matter and this and uh, especially uh, uh, understanding its nature has been one of the most fundamental problems that uh, is still uh, puzzling uh, most of the of the community uh, and so the xenon uh, uh, the xenon program with the xenon program within uh, the last uh, 20 years about uh, we have been <coughs> trying to uh, solve this puzzle uh, we as you will probably already know, we didn't manage to, but we are still uh, on the way, uh, on our way. How do we solve this puzzle? We try to, uh, we we look for a specific uh, type of uh, dark matter particle that is called the WIMP, uh, it's a weak interacting massive particle. Um, <clears throat> it's supposed uh, to scatter uh, off uh, a nuclei, uh, once every, uh, uh, I don't know how, once every how many centuries, but uh, we have a big uh, 
take xenon volume and we look for the nuclear recoil that this uh, uh, wimp uh, uh, produces uh, in a uh, in an experiment that is placed uh, on Earth. Actually, I should mostly I should say in Earth because we are located also uh, in an underground uh, laboratory. Um, it's not uh, as deep as your <laughs> nice uh, snow lab laboratory, but it's uh, still uh, uh, quite uh, deep where we can reduce the uh, cosmic ray uh, muon backgrounds uh, uh, by six orders of magnitude uh, with respect to the surface. Uh, we have uh, it's probably currently still the, the biggest laboratory. <clears throat> Uh, underground laboratory and the uh, xenon experiment is uh, here located in the central uh, hall uh, B of the uh, of the Grand Sass underground laboratory and you you probably know but I should probably specify that uh, that we are uh, uh, we go underground uh, because we want to have the uh, lowest possible background in our detector so we go move underground where cosmic rays are uh, are shielded uh, by the rocks, and then we also need to shield uh, uh, from uh, other uh, from other uh, radioactivity or uh, from other radiation in, in general. So these uh, are pictures of me and uh, uh, and the technician from our uh, machine shop uh, inside the xenon 10 shield so it's uh, the key for you now but you see that uh, the old-fashioned uh, shielding was uh, was mostly a passive shield uh, with a um, high uh, with uh, some uh, plastic polyethylene uh, and some uh, uh, dense material like uh, lead and you can also see the evolution of our program so I don't know if you see my the mouse uh, so but here you see the xenon 10 experiment uh, with the uh, lots of cables and uh, uh, it looks uh, quite dirty <laughs> and uh, it doesn't really look like a, a low background experiment uh, now uh, and so yeah we improved this uh, by also putting most of the stuff outside and uh, equipping and uh, uh, improving the, the shield with some uh, uh, low radioactivity uh, copper that was back then but nowadays the state-of-the-art shielding is uh, done with uh, a big water tank where <clears throat> the water by itself is a very good uh, shield for uh, for neutrons for environmental neutrons as you probably know and also given the fact that, uh, for example, here is uh, in this case is the uh, is a water tank for xenon uh, uh, for the current for xenon one ton and also for xenon n ton. This water tank has uh, contains 700 uh, cubic meter of water, uh, and so uh, the detector is uh, about uh, three or four meters uh, in, inside the water tank. So already the water, even if it's not as effective as the uh, as efficient as the she as the lead to shield the uh, gamma rays, uh, environmental gamma rays, but uh, it's uh, it's uh, deep enough or thick enough this data that it can also uh, remove reduce the uh, gamma ray, uh, but it's uh, also uh, made active by the use of uh, some uh, uh, um, PMTs uh, inside so that we can uh, detect. Uh, uh, the hadronic showers and muons, and the hadronic showers uh, produced by the muons uh, that interact uh, in the rock and can also uh, produce other uh, other neutrons. Uh, and in this way, uh, we are able to uh, reduce uh, <coughs> the cosmogenic uh, so called the background also uh, by a sizable amount. Uh, the technology that we are using is uh, what we call uh, a a time projection, dual phase uh, xenon based time projection chamber. Um, uh, we use, uh, we use uh, uh, so <clears throat> the, the technology is, uh, uh, is the following. Uh, we have a, a liquid xenon volume uh, that is uh, uh, with it on the top is a, a gas uh, xenon volume. Uh, 
um, and uh, and the uh, and this uh, this volume is viewed by uh, two arrays of uh, uh, photo detectors that in our case is our uh, PMTs. Uh, so when a particle interacts uh, inside the liquid xenon, uh, it uh, generates uh, a, a first uh, prompt uh, scintillation signal. Uh, and then, uh, so we place uh, some uh, 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 grids uh, uh, inside the, the liquid xenon here, which is, acts as, a, uh, as an electrode, as a cathode. And then we have uh, a series of uh, uh, two grids on the top between uh, one right below the liquid level and one above the liquid level, uh, so in the gas phase, such that if we apply an electric field uh, on the cathode, between the cathode and the, and the grid, uh, then we have an electric field. So they, uh, also the, the charges that are produced in this interaction, uh, some of the charges can uh, uh, escape uh, from, the, uh, from the local, uh, um, electric field uh, and drift towards the uh, the top of the uh, of the detector. Uh, and here, if we apply a stronger electric field between the grids, uh, that is uh, below the liquid, that is what we call the gate grid, and the and the the grid that is in the in the gas phase that is called the anode. If we apply here a strong electric field, then this uh, uh, electrons acquire enough energy to uh, pass the uh, uh, potential barrier uh, between the liquid and the gas, and uh, in the gas can be uh, further uh, accelerated. Uh, since the gas is less dense, uh, uh, they can be accelerated and they produce uh, a secondary scintillation signal. Uh, and, uh, <clears throat> and now, if uh, the top uh, the top array of uh, photomultipliers is very close to the uh, to the region where the secondary scintillation signal is produced. Uh, then uh, we can reconstruct uh, uh, the position of the interaction in the uh, in in the horizontal plane by simply looking at the heat pattern as you can see here of the uh, of the light of this S two uh, of this S two light. Uh, and uh, and then another feature of this uh, type of technology is that uh, when you look at the, the time difference between the uh, prompt scintillation signal and the secondary scintillation signal, then uh, uh, you can also uh, identify the depth uh, at which the interaction happened. Uh, <clears throat> one. Uh, just one remark, we call the uh, prompt scintillation signal S1 and the secondary scintillation S2. Uh, as you can, uh, can understand, the both uh, signals carry information about the, uh, about the energy uh, of the, the, about the energy release, and so about the energy of the particle, if you want. Uh, <coughs> sorry. Uh, Another interesting feature of the uh, of this uh, detector is that uh, you can uh, use uh, you can use the information this 3D information to uh, the fiducialize the uh, the volume and so to reject the background that is uh, happening closer to the surface. And uh, uh, another uh, feature is that you can also distinguish between. Uh, um, uh, single scatters and multiple scatters. So imagine a, a gamma ray that scatters uh, twice in the uh, in the in the CPC volume, uh, once here and another time here. Uh, then the prompt scintillation uh, light will, uh, will, uh, will will give us only one signal uh, because it's uh, quite fast. But uh, but the secondary scintillation signal if the two scatters happen at two different planes, then uh, then you expect to have like two different uh, uh, two uh, S two uh, signals. Uh, even if it's uh, in the within the same plane, uh, they, uh, and so you have uh, only one electrical signal. But if you look at the heat pattern, you will see probably uh, that you have uh, like a two hot spots, <clears throat> and so you can define some kind of trigger merit uh, to define the goodness uh, of it, if you want, of, uh, of your reconstruction algorithm. 
Uh, and so all these features are uh, important for a low background experiment because uh, give you uh, the possibility of reducing the radioactivity, but also in our case, uh, if you are looking for nuclear recoilers, we can also uh, we can also distinguish between electronic recoil, which is most uh, dominant background, and uh, uh, <coughs> and nuclear recoil, which is the the signal that we are uh, that we are after. Uh, and uh, the way we look, we distinguish between these two types uh, of, uh, of recoils is uh, by looking at uh, at the ratio between the uh, the S2 and S1. Um, simply because of the of the nature of the uh, of the two particles the electron is quite uh, is very light and a nucleus and, and, and a nuclear recoil is very is very heavy so they have uh, different uh, um, <coughs> interact uh, interactions and characteristics <coughs> Uh, so here is the evolution of uh, xenon-based nuclear uh, free sun rejection chambers. Uh, uh, we started, as I said, uh, in 2005 with uh, uh, with xenon-10. Uh, back then, <coughs> as you saw before, it was uh, more like uh, a prototype uh, uh, detector rather than really uh, a real detector developed for dark matter. Uh, Nevertheless, it gave uh, some uh, results on uh, um, on the WIMP uh, uh, WIMP nuclear spin independent interaction, uh, uh, and uh, at that time was one of the most uh, uh, compelling limits, uh, 10 to minus 43. But as you can see, with the years and with a few years, we can uh, I should say. Uh, so within uh, let's say five years, we managed to improve uh, the this sensitivity by a factor uh, by uh, two orders of magnitude, and uh, with another five years, we improved the sensitivity by another two orders of magnitude. Now we are uh, currently commissioning the uh, Xenon uh, Anton experiment, which is going to uh, improve the sensitivity. Uh, by another order of magnitude, and we, many of us are also in the Darwin experiment, which is uh, uh, looking for <coughs> to, is a kind of a bigger version of still the dual phase transformation chamber that will uh, uh, will come along uh, in the next uh, five years. Uh, so here, just a few words about the uh, you know one ton instrument. Uh, it's a TPC. Uh, uh, it contains uh, 3.2 tons of liquid xenon. Uh, and two tons uh, of uh, active targets, so the rest is uh, all around uh, in, inside the uh, inside the crust. Uh, uh, the two arrays of photomultiplier cubes uh, are are, at, are contain 248 PMTs. The drift uh, length uh, and the diameter have more or less uh, similar dimensions of about one meter. And if you're interested in the details, I'm listing here <coughs> some of the um, uh, some of the articles that uh, that you can find. So we ran the experiment between November 2016 and February 2018. Uh, we actually we took uh, data also about a year, even after February 2018, but. Uh, the data that I will discuss in this uh, in this seminar are only related, mainly related to this, uh, uh, what we call SR0 and SR1, uh, time run 0 and time run 1. And most of the results are <coughs> that um, I will present are related to the time run 0, which has been, with, uh, sorry, time run 1, which is the one that has been uh, what we did in, in uh, uh, more extensively until we are more sure about the um, uh, about the the data the behavior and also about the our analysis it has been a forge of data and results uh, this uh, science run one uh, we have provided uh, uh, several uh, uh, interesting uh, uh, papers uh, uh, about uh, the the instrument the sensitivity and the way we do the analysis we have also presented some uh, uh, the, of course, the main goal were wind search, and we have been uh, looking at uh, uh, spin and independent, uh, and also uh, at other types of uh, uh, 
of possible uh, uh, interactions. Uh, and uh, since it's a low background experiment, uh, so it's a kind of a rare, uh, we could do also other rare, uh, rare event search, uh, searches, uh, and I will uh, talk mostly about them. So let's start with the WIMP search uh, first, just to say that we have, of course, uh, uh, this is, uh, is our main uh, uh, was our main goal, and we reached the goal uh, as you can see here in 2018. Uh, so, <clears throat> um, one, a few years after the the start of the uh, of the experiment, uh, and this uh, also makes makes you understand the, the care that we have put into the uh, into the into the analysis to provide the, the final result. Uh, so here, uh, in this table, I list uh, the main uh, <coughs> main background sources uh, uh, that are mostly, as we said already, uh, electronic recoils. Uh, so we have also some uh, uh, radiogenic, uh, maybe neutron radiogenic. Uh, <coughs> uh, then we have the coherent and uh, elastic uh, neutrino nucleus uh, uh, scattering, which was not even uh, was not uh, uh, worrisome uh, to this uh, kind of search. We had uh, other types of uh, background, and we also included the signal uh, uh, well, here in this uh, specific plot. Uh, we included the uh, two hundred uh, uh, two hundred GB WIMP with a with a Cross section of uh, uh, 4.7 times 10 to the minus 47, and you see <coughs> the number of events that we were expecting in uh, three different fiducial uh, uh, points. Uh, so, in the end, uh, uh, what we could uh, we could uh, only set limits. We didn't really uh, find. I mean, these are <coughs> as you, you can see here. The once we we did a, um, a blind analysis and once we opened the box we uh, we found this uh, event uh, distributions of course uh, most of them were in uh, within the uh, electronic recoil band but some of them were inside the, the mostly inside the signal region so once you input uh, all your <coughs> background uh, uh, sources and the signals and the signal um, Sorry, background models and signal model into your uh, unbind profile likelihood approach. You end up with uh, with this kind of limits. Uh, <clears throat> so here is the is the limit uh, on the classical, let's say, uh, spin independent wind uh, cross section. <clears throat> we also uh, analyze uh, and set limits on the wind uh, and the spin and spin dependent and spin the clinon has most has two uh, isotopes uh, that uh, have uh, an odd neutron in uh, our main i mean we are mostly sensitive to wimp neutron uh, uh, spin dependent cross section <coughs> scattering sorry and this is uh, uh, the world uh, leading uh, um, limit uh, to date uh, and we also uh, looked at uh, uh, some uh, uh, other possible uh, type of uh, WIMP interaction, like this uh, WIMP ion uncoupling. <clears throat> so, uh, as I said, we had the lowest uh, nuclear recoil background and the largest target matter. We had the highest sensitivity of, uh, uh, we are still uh, leading the field. Uh, as you can see here, you can we and as we also discussed in the uh, in the table, uh, there is some uh, uh, the, the neutrino what we call neutrino floor. This uh, uh, orange uh, uh, dotted curve uh, is uh, is given by neutrinos that are coming from different sources. Especially here, there is this uh, uh, the bump is so it's given is the the last part of the. Uh, this bump is given by the boron eight uh, from uh, neutrino from the sun, and we asked ourselves if we could look for this kind of signal. So, as you remember from the previous uh, table, uh, this uh, coherent uh, elastic neutrino nucleus uh, scattering would give us a very, very, <coughs> very small rate, uh, and this is how the 
is uh, the rate or the spectrum of this uh, uh, nuclear recoil from uh, uh, from neutrinos from boronate neutrinos would look like but but we are aware that uh, given the flux that uh, we know from other experiments of boronate neutrinos uh, and the cross section of four neutrinos of these energies or the number of xenon that we expose uh, to the uh, uh, that we use for our uh, for our search and the times the exposure will, will should give us uh, 600 events per ton year, and uh, but of course uh, we because they are they have very low energy. Okay, then we are they contribute only for 0.01 percent of our background, and uh, and the rate is is very much reduced. So. But we could uh, do something, uh, something more. Uh, so what we did uh, was to uh, <clears throat> model the detect the, our detector response, and this is what we have been doing since uh, uh, the the first uh, uh, wind search. Uh, uh, so we are we are repeating somehow the. Uh, the exercise so but uh, in this case we have a different uh, a, a different uh, signal model so we start from a solar boronate uh, decays uh, and this gives us uh, some uh, uh, recoils uh, in the in the xenon one ton then we have to uh, then we in our uh, somehow in our simulation in our model uh, we uh, we uh, pass from uh, uh, from Recoiling uh, from uh, recoil uh, from nuclear recoils into uh, charge and scintillation, uh, and this charge uh, so charge yield and scintillation yield uh, are then uh, uh, take I mean they they kind of take uh, two different paths also in the uh, in the TPC so the the charge the charge are drifted. And during this drift, uh, they are uh, they get uh, attenuated because of the impurities, the, the electronegative impurities that are diluted. So we have to take into account uh, this into account. So then we then they have to pass, the, as we said, the the potential barrier and have to also get accelerated. So also this uh, process is uh, is somehow modeled. <coughs> and then uh, uh, optical photons are generated, and here is where. Uh, the scintillation, primary and secondary scintillation uh, uh, photons uh, get uh, jacked into the same uh, uh, optical uh, photon propagation model. And then uh, uh, we have to also account for the PNP and the electronics. So we have to model also the trigger and the reconstruction and finally get into the, our uh, selection modeling and the analysis. Uh, and then we do our inference at the end of the of this process and in this process you have to take into account as we said the liquid zero response so we use a, a, a model to get the, the light yield and the charge yield uh, and then we also have to take into account the purity electromagnetic field uh, and so forth and so on so <clears throat> after all this uh, process what we end up with this uh, uh, is, uh, is somehow this uh, projection uh, here uh, what you see is the uh, other so in uh, in red <clears throat> so here the, the the dotted the curve is the expected uh, uh, um, coherent uh, elastic neutrino nucleus uh, scattering uh, rate expected uh, what you will see in uh, in green in blue and in black are the acceptances. The green is for the S2 uh, acceptance. Uh, the, uh, the the blue is the um, S1 uh, coincidence. And that and so why by simply multiplying the, these two curves, you get the total acceptance. So once you convolute the uh, the dotted uh, uh, curve with the uh, with the acceptance curve, you end up with this. Uh, uh, with this red uh, uh, spectrum, <clears throat> okay, and uh, oops, sorry. in this uh, uh, in this kind of 
uh, in this kind of analysis. So, so we set a different, uh, uh, a different region of interest. So we had to somehow relax our, uh, our threshold so, and so our requirement uh, on both S1 and S2. Uh, so for S1, uh, we decreased especially the, uh, the coincidence uh, before we were requiring three coincidence, three, three coincidence of PMCs within the same 10, uh, uh, 50 nanosecond window. Now we are requiring for two. And this of course increases uh, some uh, uh, the impact on of uh, spurious events. And so we had to uh, also change our cuts in order to uh, somehow take uh, take into account uh, this uh, additional uh, <coughs> uh, uh, in background. Uh, so uh, and and so we set our region of interest uh, with the NS two between uh, 120 and 500 photoelectrons, and the NS one between one and six photoelectrons. So this uh, region, uh, because of the this uh, because of the complex uh, way the scintillation photons and the uh, uh, ionization uh, uh, electrons are produced in uh, in xenon, especially since we are very close to to threshold. Uh, so somehow this we could not report uh, this uh, region here, this region of interest into an exact. The uh, recoil energy scale. So what we did uh, was to simply shade the, an area uh, here, which is uh, this one, which is uh, contains uh, about 68% uh, of the uh, of this uh, coherent uh, elastic neutrino nucleus <coughs> uh, scattering event. And so by uh, by doing this analysis, what we could do. Uh, so I should first say that uh, uh, in order to uh, to do this, as we said, we had to uh, model our the response of liquid xenon. So we had to consider the the charge here, what we call Q y, and the light field, what we call the L y. Uh, <clears throat> and this we took from uh, uh, from uh, Nest, which is a, a a simulation uh, package for uh, novel elements, uh, and uh, and this uh, uh, which is uh, used uh, in our uh, extensively used in our uh, liquid xenon uh, community, uh, and this is uh, so you can see that we used the <coughs> so we have we have some data. Uh, which are not uh, from our experiment. We had to take uh, most of this uh, from external measurements. So these are <coughs> from uh, uh, in, uh, facilities uh, that have been uh, uh, that have measured. Uh, sorry, this uh, I don't know where I am. Uh, that have measured the, the charge yield and the uh, and the light yield at. Uh, uh, for xenon at such uh, low energies, uh, and so we took this uh, black uh, curves uh, with the uncertainty, uh, the six, sixty-eight percent uncertainty explained um, given by the shaded uh, gray area, <clears throat> and so once uh, when we, I mean, as you can see, most of the uncertainties lie into the uh, into the light yield. Uh, and this is uh, because, uh, uh, well, be because there are many, uh, so there are not so many uh, photons that uh, uh, that are generated, uh, and we and there is no way we can uh, we can uh, uh, multiply or somehow um, um, uh, there is no way we can amplify uh, the light uh, signal uh, coming directly from the scintillation. What we can amplify is the charge, and that's why we can get to, to such low uh, energies. So this uncertainty reflects into this gray area and also into our kind of understanding at low energy. So what we could do in this uh, in this analysis was to uh, so we had this uh, let's say three. Uh, three uh, para 
parameters uh, that we could uh, vary. QY is the charge field is, uh, is relatively well known, but the flux uh, from, uh, uh, from the from neutrino, uh, coherent neutrinos, <coughs> is a, we, we could use it as, a, uh, as our parameter of, of interest. And in this case, uh, we could set, uh, we could give a, a value for the, for the flux, uh, or we, sh we can assume the, the flux uh, uh, fixed, uh, and then we can set a limit on, a, uh, on the light yield, on a flat light yield at uh, the, the region of interest uh, uh, that, we are, uh, that we are setting. And this is why we are, <coughs> we are giving this blue uh, uh, kind of limit within the 60%, 68% uh, energy range here in this figure. Uh, of course, if we then uh, consider the, uh, the, the, if we take the boronate and put it into our uh, WIMP uh, uh, in current framework, then we can uh, we can now since we uh, decrease uh, our energy threshold, we can also set uh, a limit on the wind nuclear um, uh, on the wind nuclear uh, spin independent uh, uh, cross section uh, versus mass, and uh, you can see here that we have a compensating uh, limit. That covers uh, somehow the the range from the range that uh, wasn't covered uh, so far. So we also <coughs> what uh, we could what we could also do in terms of uh, WIMP or other type of particles uh, uh, search, uh, we could relax uh, our uh, completely let's say our uh, uh, requirement on the on the S1, so we can say, okay, we are, I want to only have uh, wind, uh, sorry, S2s uh, from uh, uh, 100, from 80 photoelectrons above, okay, and and then uh, even without having uh, an S1. So this, uh, of course, poses some uh, uh, problem <coughs> because we get now we cannot really uh, apply a fiducial volume that is. Uh, uh, the fiducial volume that we can apply is only on the radius, but it's not anymore on the uh, on the depth. Uh, but this uh, and so uh, also the fact that we don't have an S one, uh, uh, it doesn't uh, so it doesn't allow us to do uh, to have uh, a a discrimination, so we completely abandon the discrimination. Uh, we also have uh, not a complete understanding of uh, uh, of the background, so we can use this analysis only for limit setting. We did uh, we did try some basic, uh, uh, or so not some basic, some advanced uh, um, uh, background uh, modeling in this uh, uh, region of interest, but we are not. We were not so sure. So what we did, we just uh, set uh, limits uh, uh, based on the uh, on uh, uh, on yelling, <coughs> yelling methods. Uh, so without uh, uh, claiming uh, any possible signal, so we could only set limits. Then we could set limits on the on. A, series of uh, model uh, like uh, for so if we don't know if it's nuclear recoil or uh, electron recoil then we can uh, set limits on the spin independent uh, dark matter nuclear scattering or also on dark matter electron scattering. <coughs> uh, then another important information that we can extract from our experiment is uh, about the energy of uh, a or the energy deposited most of the energy or most of the events are coming from a, a electronic recoil, as we said. So <clears throat> we can get uh, a, a spec spectral information uh, from our um, uh, about our background and also uh, from uh, uh, from the sources that uh, that we use in uh, in the liquid zeno. Uh, so to, um, to do this, we can. Uh, 
we can use the low energy sources and for this low energy sources we have uh, no problem also with the uh, with the with saturation at some point for already for 200 uh, uh, kV energy <coughs> the position uh, we have we start seeing uh, some kind of uh, a saturation uh, or, or this is an s2 uh, signal so this s2 signal that we detect is the is this black curve but then uh, uh, but what we should have seen was this uh, uh, red curve and this is only a kind of adc uh, saturation but uh, uh, with the uh, higher energies, so when we get uh, 10 to the 6 photo electrons at this point, uh, we only we not only deal with the uh, PM, uh, ADC saturation, but we also deal with other types of saturation within the uh, PMT uh, base mainly. And so, <coughs> so what we but what we can do is actually uh, to remove. Uh, the saturated uh, photomultipliers uh, and to use the uh, the non-saturated uh, uh, photomultipliers to get a template and then uh, to uh, somehow uh, correct uh, the uh, the s2 by the template and use the template instead of the uh, instead for energy reconstruction and it gives us a very uh, nice and linear uh, energy uh, energy scale uh, the energy scale uh, is also so the other important uh, part is that uh, the way the way the xeno the the way the light is produced and the charges are produced uh, they are anti-correlated so when we look at the s2 versus s1 you can see that you can use to some kind of uh, a in a different scale that uh, here uh, it should be Kind of perpendicular to this uh, dashed line. So, so if you use this scale, then you are, uh, then you can, uh, you, you can uh, get a much better uh, energy resolution. Uh, here is the uh, is the resolution curve as a function of the energy, and actually uh, we have uh, the best uh, uh, energy resolution uh, at the at the at the um, u beta beta of the um uh, of xenon uh, the best uh, energy resolution of any uh, xenon based uh, detectors uh, to date and uh, and here is the still the blinded uh, region where we could do some uh, uh neutrino stable beta decay of course we are not so sensitive but then what we could do uh, so we could use also our spectrum uh here i think i should go a bit uh, uh, faster otherwise uh, i won't get to the end uh, so we can use our the fact that we have uh, a very low background experiment uh, not only in the nuclear recoil uh, but also for the electronic recoil is the lowest background ever achieved uh, by at the low at these low energies and so what we did uh, was to look uh, for uh, in some kind of uh, exotic signal, which is uh, not uh, still not a sign of new physics. It's still something that is pre predicted by the uh, standard model. It's simply a very rare signal that is the double electron capture, uh, so uh, which is uh, explained here. So you can get uh, the, the two electrons that uh, get captured uh, and then the two neutrinos escape without releasing the energy and then the and then uh, the the two uh, vacancies that have been left by the electrons get filled by the other electrons, and this uh, will uh, generate uh, a two uh, coincident uh, uh, X-rays. Uh, and so we are looking for these two coincident X-rays uh, that are <coughs> in a region uh, in, in the 60. Uh, 64 uh, point three uh, keV uh, so we did the, all, all the background modeling based on our knowledge uh, from uh, uh, radioactivity and everything and our uh, let's say uh, simulations and so after the like, uh, we did a blind completely blind analysis we uh, we had first uh, our background model that included all the dominant back possible backgrounds and so when we opened the box, we found a little bump uh, that uh, had uh, about uh, a bit more than 120 events. Uh, and this uh, <coughs> was the, was the let's say, the rarest event or the longest uh, uh, 
lifetime uh, uh, and were measured directly by uh, by an experiment. Uh, very quickly, what we could do, simply looking again at the low uh, at the electronic recoil background or at the electronic recoil spectrum, where we could see if there is any sign of uh, some something that is not predicted by our background model that as we saw before is uh, kind of well trained. And so when we open the box uh, in the low energy region, uh, what we found is that there is an excess. You probably have heard about this excess <coughs> in the uh, low and lowest energy regions between uh, seven and zero keV. In the, uh, and uh, and this uh, this excess is uh, is even without. Uh, I mean, just simply uh, considering only our background, uh, we have uh, something which is uh, three point three uh, sigma. Uh, Poissonian fluctuation uh, above our background. So we asked ourselves what it could be. Uh, and uh, first, we did a lot of systematic checks. Uh, we also had a, a, an external author that helped us uh, um, uh, helped us modeling uh, the beta decay of the uh, lab 214, which is our uh, main uh, background sources at this low energies. Uh, at and so we did all these uh, systematic checks. We also tried to model the uh, radon uh, data from our calibration, uh, asking ourselves uh, what it could be. Well, actually, so this came after our, our uh, data release. Uh, there were colleagues uh, from uh, 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 from, uh, um, uh, from the US uh, who question that it could be uh, argon uh, 37, but to, we had done uh, some uh, uh, kind of uh, basic calculation and uh, it cannot be, uh, it cannot be uh, argon 37 from initial concentration of xenon gas because it has a too short uh, half-life. It could be what they said is that uh, it is from air leaking, but uh, we measure uh, the air leak uh, with our uh, Krypton to xenon measurement, and uh, we see that uh, we would expect uh, to less than five events per ton year. Instead, we this uh, this excess is uh, 65 uh, uh, events per ton year, <coughs> so it cannot be. Plus, uh, uh, so what we do, what we show here is always uh, kind of is is for visualization of this uh, spectra. But what we do we usually uh, use an unbind uh, likelihood fit, and uh, our best uh, fit peak is not at 2.7, but is, or 2.8, uh, like argon, uh, uh, but it's uh, most more likely at 2.3 uh, keV. Uh, we also uh, checked if it could be tritium, uh, uh, and uh, uh, this, of course, is still uh, something that is under. Uh, is under uh, investigation. Uh, the significance of the presence of tritium in our xenon is 3.2 sigma. Uh, of course, uh, the most exciting part of this uh, search is that it should be coming from uh, uh, new physics like uh, solar axions. And this, this solar axion fits uh, quite well. It's the most significant, uh, I mean, the best fit uh, we get it uh, from the solar axion. With a 3.4 uh, sigma uh, significance, uh, uh, this uh, the, what we published is in contrast to the uh, with the, some uh, stellar uh, uh, with some uh, uh, astrophysical constraints. But actually, if we if we in, uh, include which we didn't. Uh, uh, so in inverse primal of two scattering, then uh, the tension gets uh, uh, very much uh, much alleviated. It could also come from uh, the neutrino magnetic moment. If the neutrino had a magnetic moment that is not uh, uh, what the standard mod extended standard model uh, uh, predicts, uh, if it's uh, uh, if it's uh, larger than this, then it, it, the then the the Let's say the rate, uh, the rate would be uh, 
much increased. And so when we uh, model the the signal that you would see in our back in our in our uh, detector, and we include it into our likelihood analysis, then we see a 3.26 significance. It could also be uh, well, the best uh, fit, as I said, is a is a uh, is a peak, and of course the bosonic dark matter uh, in this uh, actually like particle it would be simply a peak at the at the mass of the uh, of the particle. Uh, so as you can see, a peak at 2.3 is the best uh, possible. Of course, in this case, since we are only looking for a peak. So we have to uh, also account for the root effect effects and so the global significance to get down to 3.0 uh, uh, <coughs> the global significance. And uh, well, I think I wanted to uh, I wanted to talk a little bit more about the Clean program, but then I don't have uh, time. I just uh, tell you that uh, you see that. Uh, these are pictures about uh, from Dino uh, and Con, so the next uh, generation which is coming in line. So let's say stay tuned because we can reach a, a very good sensitivity. So thanks a lot. <laughs> I took uh, a few minutes more longer, but I hope uh, it's worth it. Thank you very much. Alfredo, for, for the nice talk. Um, are there any questions? Um, you can raise your hand now. The raise hand feature looks to be on the reaction. Ah, sorry, Chris, go ahead. <laughs> I thought there was a clapping. Yeah, it was at the beginning. <laughs> okay. Oh, <thanks. laughs> can, can I... um? I'm sorry, yeah. I'm going to ask you a very technical question about your uh, saturated signal correction. I hope uh, I can answer, yes. <laughs> uh, can, can you call up, you showed two plots of saturated signals and... Uh, um, ah, yes. Uh, so I don't know how to go back. Uh, should be here yes yeah yeah so so exactly those two those two um mm -hmm. pe signal peaks um if i understood correctly what you did is you fit the the rising edge to the signature to the to the saturation point mm -hmm. and then you used a pulse shape to continue on and mm -hmm. for the top plot it looks like Okay. The pulse shape is just truncated mm -hmm. because it comes yeah. back and it fits the falling edge too. Yeah. But the bottom plot, which is five times the size, mm -hmm. you you don't yes. fit the falling edge. There's some yeah that's, distortions that's going true. on. Is, is exactly. that understood? Is, yeah, this is the so the PMT base uh, is um, uh, again as some saturation simply because uh, the PMT, the, it's the base itself. The PMT is, is supposed, to, supposed to be linear up to a very high uh, light uh, signals, but uh, the base itself, uh, you know, there are uh, some uh, capacitors and uh, uh, we put some capacitors at the last uh, stages. Right. We already know that uh, they get uh, this, the, the, this, um, so the, the 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 current that flows in this uh, last uh, three um, stages, simply because it's the most of the of the charge, so it's the highest part of the charge of the uh, of the the photomultiplier. Right. Uh, there you so it kind of uh, uh, gets a, a kind of a feedback effect that yeah. Uh, the same type of the saturation. So it, it's a saturation, but you cannot see it directly as the ADC saturation that cuts the waveform. It's simply that at some point, the if you put a certain uh, uh, light signal, you read out, if, even if you increase the light signal, you read out more or less the same uh, amount. Yeah, sure. Okay. And it's 
truncates. Okay, that makes sense. Thank yes. you. You're welcome. And this is, uh, as I said, so we use the first part of the waveform to to start uh, uh, to start the fit, but then uh, we completely ignore all the PMTs that uh, get the most of the signal, and we only use the all the, the PMTs that get less signal because the template is, I mean, because this S2 shape is the same uh, everywhere, right? So if, as long as we have enough uh, signal in in these other PMTs, then we we merge them together and we get a kind of a template and then we put the template uh, and we think and we use the first part uh, of the signal only to define to decide the, the height of this uh, template signal thank you you're welcome are there any other question or comment for Alfredo? Shimon? Yes, hi. Uh, sorry if I missed that in the in, in, in the talk. Uh, a general question: What's what's going to happen with the detector? You're continuing to uh, take more data or recirculate, repurify. What's what's the plan now? Yeah. So we we finished the Zeno one ton uh, was decommissioned uh, from now two years ago, and uh, and now we are commissioning the next phase, which is uh, Zeno one n ton. What we call Anton is uh, I have the you're giving me the time. So 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 all the uh, equipment everything is gone from yes. the lab. From the, the yeah well we are reusing we are reusing a lot of the infrastructure but we so like the the water tank and the cryogenics uh, uh, well, part of the uh, of the recirculation loop so the filters and everything but uh, many and also some PMTs, but most of the stuff is now new. <clears throat> like the, the inner detector is completely new. And we also try to improve on you know, what uh, we learned from from Dino one time. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Any other question? If not, I would like uh, to thank Alfredo again. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank and you. uh, we will reconvene uh, next week. Thanks again. Bye, everybody. Thanks. Bye. Bye.